Hey folks, this is Snuffio from the PyCharm team. It's about time that we made the first release of PyCharm 2021. In this release, we've got a lot of things packed in here. First up is performance. Now, we know that indexing can be slow. So this time around, we've made significant changes to the way that we index Python packages. As a result, you should be able to see much faster indexing times in PyCharm 2021.1. And the best part is we've actually laid the groundwork to make it even faster. So stay tuned for the next few releases as we make more progress on performance, especially when it comes to indexing. Secondly, we have new support for collaborative development. Now, before we already had something called the Code With Me plugin. What we've done in this release is bundle that plugin because we feel that it is stable enough and has all the features necessary. All you need to do is enable it. And once you have, you'll be given a link to share with your friends. They can use that link to then join your coding session and they'll have the ability to not only edit code, but debug code with you as well. Now my friend Alexei has joined the call. What I'm going to do is also turn on a voice calling and that's available within the call with me icon menu. And you can see within the menu, there is something called enable voice call. And that's what we're going to do right here. Once the voice call is enabled, you'll see a new three dot option pop up right next to the call with me icon. And what you have here is just a normal call window. So you can turn on your camera. I can wave hi to Alexi and he can also wave hi back as long as we're still friends. I hope. There he is. And you can also turn on your microphone. You can turn off your microphone. There's also a chat functionality. You can raise your hand. So all the good stuff that you expect, it's all there. We can exit that call, close the call window, but your Code With Me session is still active without the call. One of the most useful things in Code With Me is the ability to follow anyone who is on the call. In this case, I'm following Alexi, and I've done that by clicking on his icon at the top, but we can also make it so that we are always in sync with each other. Note that you can turn on follow or turn off follow by clicking on any of the icons at the top. Another thing to note is that in a code with me session, you're not limited to just code editing. You can also debug together, run together, add breakpoints and whatnot together. And when the debugger stops, you'll see the same things and you'll be able to inspect the same variables as well. When you're done with your code with me session, you can go ahead and kick out a particular user, or you can turn off access to everybody and disconnect all. And now Alexi is out and there is no longer a session. So far, you've just seen me opening up a session for somebody else to join. What if you wanted to join a session? You just go into the code with me options and paste in a link that they've provided you. Once you've done that, if your current IDE doesn't match the IDE that is required, a client will be downloaded so that you both have the same kind of client. Otherwise, you'll have the same kind of functionality. In this case, I've been invited to Alexi's Code With Me session, and we can both see where we are, we can both debug. So you get the same kind of functionality if you had hosted it yourself. You can write, edit, uh, and collaborate with your friends. You can also join them on a video call. You can debug with them all within PyCharm. You don't have to go anywhere else. Now, folks have been asking for better WSL support for a pretty long time in the PyCharm U track. Now, we haven't made all the progress that we wanted to make in this release, but in this release, you can open up a project directly within WSL, meaning that you no longer have to use SFTP or SSH or anything like that in order to connect to a remote interpreter, which is a WSL interpreter. Not only that, but now there's even a workaround way of adding a virtual EMV within PyCharm. So this means that you will be able to run, debug, edit everything within WSL itself WSL is a complete game changer for those developing Python applications on Windows. 
In this example, I'm going to create a small project inside of WSL and work on that directly from PyCharm. The first thing that I'm going to do though is create a virtual ENV. I'm going to make sure that I have virtual ENV installed. And after that, I'm just going to create a virtual ENV in the .vanv folder of this project. Once that's done, I can take the parent working directory, go over to PyCharm and open it up. As you can see, we opened up a WSL project directly within PyCharm. Once the project is opened, what we need to do is make sure that we have the right interpreter for this project. I'm just going to go ahead, open up interpreter options and make sure that I add the new interpreter that I created. Make sure to head over to the WSL side of things and then point to the right interpreter that you want to use for your project. Using the virtual ENV environment option will not create the interpreter that you want inside of WSL. We're working on this and hopefully in a future release, you'll be able to create virtual ENVs within PyCharm itself. So now all we need to do is point to the correct Python interpreter, hit OK, hit OK again, and that should give us the right interpreter. Now that we have our interpreter set up, let's just create a simple file. I'm going to set the encoding to UTF-8, going to create a main if statement, create a main function that I am calling within that main if statement. And I'm just going to print out something really simple like hello world. I'm going to now try and run it. That works. We're using WSL EXE and we can also debug it. Now we're not done here. We plan to make significant changes to WSL support in the next release of PyCharm. But in this release, we wanted to make sure that you can at least open a WSL file path as well as add a virtual interpreter within PyCharm itself. Now we know that PyCharm has pretty good code completion, but we're not resting on our laurels here. What we wanted to do in this release is add something called auto import on module completion. And what that means is whenever you complete a module name within PyCharm and you invoke a method or a function inside that module, PyCharm will automatically import that module for you. We also have automatic imports for known aliases like pandas. In this case, I'm using pd.dataframe and pandas is imported as pd above. We can also do something really interesting like it.tak. And what that is going to do is import iter tools from the standard library. And if we go above, we can see that iter tools is on line five and it has indeed been imported. So you don't have to break your flow and everything just works the way you want it to. We've also added something completely new and that is the new package search panel in PyCharm. Now, what this little panel does is it allows you to search up anything within PyPI and it can also show you the rendered documentation for that package. Furthermore, you can also go ahead and select which version you want to install. And you can also take a look at all the different packages that you have installed and you'll be able to see the documentation rendered as well, as well as the version that you've installed. Them. Now, we're not really done with this panel. There's a lot to come that's still in the works, but it should lay the groundwork and foundation to have a better Python package management solution inside of PyCharm. Now, we know that PyCharm Pro is used mainly for web development. There's a lot of other stuff in there, but it's mainly used for web development. So in this release, there's something that I'm particularly proud of, which is our built-in HTML preview. You just click on it when on a HTML page and that opens up the preview. So here we can just create a container. I already have Tailwind CSS imported and I get code completion for that. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more padding to this particular container. So I'm just going to give it a P10 and you can see the change reflected on the right hand side. Now blue is a little on the light side. Let me choose something a little darker. So we're going to go with yellow 700. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's add a P tag, give that a class so that we can add in Tailwind CSS modifiers. 
and we're going to give that a background of well i wanted blue but i guess selected yellow so let me just fix that again and once we add text we can see that beautiful blue color pop up on the right hand side i'm not hitting refresh at all during this time it's just happening automatically lastly i'm just going to add a little bit of padding to my inner box and that is reflected as well i'm going to change the name and i am going to add a little bit of rounded corners to it that doesn't look too rounded let me increase the rounded corners a little bit um, there should be a 2xl option in tailwind yep there it is and there we go and lastly i'm going to center the text as well so we have text dash center as a class and there we have it so as i'm doing this a good designer friend of mine is sitting next to me and he's telling me that you know this doesn't really look like pie charm it doesn't have the pie charm colors so i am going to change the background to something green and i'm going to change the inner box into something yellow so it's closer to the pie charm colors and the text itself can remain black there we have it you don't need to open up chrome you don't need to open up firefox or or opera if people still use that um you can do it directly within pie charm and it's blazing fast and it's probably my favorite feature in this release Okay, but what about databases? Well, in this release, we've added something really significant. Before, with MongoDB support, you could query stuff within MongoDB, but you couldn't make the changes in the table view itself. In this release, we've added support so that you can directly change anything within MongoDB and have those changes reflected in the database itself. So in this case, we're changing the H239. We're going to press the preview changes button that's going to show us the DML preview and we can hit submit. Once we've done that, the instance will be updated accordingly. All right, there's just one more thing. We'd like to thank everybody who contributes to PyCharm Community Edition. In this release, we've added a lot of things from the community. It's easy to forget that PyCharm Community is open source and you can make patches and updates to it as much as you like. Uh, it's completely available on GitHub. So we'd like to thank uh, everybody that contributed to this release and yeah, keep them coming. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. If you disliked it, you also know what to do. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you want more of this kind of content. And of course, if we're getting anything wrong or you'd like to see something, please leave a comment below. Until next time, see you later.